common lab tests we often talk about in myeloma? When you come to see the doctor, if you have multiple myeloma, what are the lab tests we send? And what are the lab tests that we look at and discuss back with you when we have the results? We call them myeloma markers, and let's have a quick look at that. One of the first tests that we send is something called as electrophoresis. Electrophoresis can be sent in the blood as well as urine. It's nothing but placing that tissue, which is either blood or urine in a charged electrical field, and all the proteins in the blood and the urine, they sort of move according to their charges. The immunoglobulins we talked about that is overproduced in myeloma, they, and I'm going to use my laser pointer here, they tend to accumulate in this gamma region of the electrophoresis, um, <clears throat> electrophoresis chart. The gamma spike in a normal non-myeloma sample is a small hump. However, for someone who has an overproduction of immunoglobulins, they form this sort of red spike in that gamma region, and that is what we often refer to as the M spike. The M stands for monoclonal because it's one single type of antibody that's being produced. So the M spike is almost always abnormal, and the M spike is our first indication that there is something wrong. So once we have the M spike, what it tells you is that there is a monoclonal protein, but it does not tell us what kind of monoclonal protein it is. For that, we send something called as an immunofixation, which again can be sent in the serum as well as the urine. And that test actually kind of um, tells you what is the exact kind of monoclonal protein that the body is overproducing. We use antibodies to characterize the type of monoclonal protein, and it yields a result to us saying, is it IgG kappa? Like, what's the heavy chain component and what's the light chain component, et cetera? So we have a full picture using the immunofixation. Quantitative immunoglobulin is another test, which, again, um, we check to see the total number of immunoglobulins in, which are circulating inside the body. In a normal composition inside our body, the majority of antibodies are IgG, which comprises of 80%. IgA, which is found in all our surfaces, like you know the tears, the saliva, the mucosal surfaces, comprises of 15%. IgM floats around in the blood for 5%, and IgD and IgA are very less, less than 1%. And this is how a normal composition is there in a non-myelomatous um, state. In multiple myeloma, again, there is this overproduction of antibodies, and these can have very high levels of a single antibody that can be measured by this quantitative immunoglobulin level. For example, a serum IgG level can come back as over 3,000, whereas a normal level is 700 to 1,600. So this will help us determine what is the subtype, or subtype of antibodies, and along with what we call a free light chain ratio, which gives us what is the type and what is the amount of light chains that are elevated, we finally have a diagnosis as to what is the kind of myeloma that we're dealing with. So the normal light chain ratio in the body is usually around one because the body kind of tends to produce equal amounts of kappa and lambda light chains. And the ratio of note can be slightly abnormal in those with chronic kidney disease or those who have an acute kidney failure. In myeloma protein, one or the other of the light chains will be extremely elevated, which skews the ratio to over one. For example, if it's more than three, that's again an indication that there could be, we could be dealing with something like multiple myeloma. In fact, you know, and I'll come to this later, one of the diagnostic criteria for multiple myeloma is when the ratio is so skewed and so high that it's above 100 that's considered to be diagnostic of multiple myeloma by itself. We often assess for whether the patient who is presenting to us in clinic is symptomatic or not. Now, symptomatic myeloma, we often, as physicians, we often like to have abbreviations and we like to remember them. So it's called CRAB, the CRAB criteria for the longest possible time. And the CRAB stands for, the C stands for hypercalcemia, meaning a very high level of calcium in the body. And we have all these cutoffs that we look at based on which we decide whether it's high or not. So if someone has a high calcium in the body, if someone has a kidney dysfunction resulting in a very high creatinine level or a decrease in the amount of kidney filtration, and someone has anemia, if their hemoglobin is less than two, or let's say someone used to be at a hemoglobin of 14 and it's now 11, meaning there's a difference of two from what they used to be. Or if we start seeing any bone lesions inside when we do like imaging, like x-rays, CTs, PET scans, MRI, any or all of these are considered to be signs of active myeloma. 
it's also very important that the symptoms need to be attributable to myeloma and that we don't have any other alternative explanation to what could be causing these symptoms. Now, there have been a lot of uh, studies that showed that there were certain other very highly suggestive characteristics that predicted that certain patients would progress or certain patients would have multiple myeloma. So now <clears throat> what we call myeloma defining events have been expanded to include a couple of other criteria, which is looking at the bone marrow biopsy and looking at the percentage of plasma cells. So the new criteria, what we often allude to is called the slim FRAP criteria. The S stands for 60 percentage of plasma cells in the bone marrow. If someone has a bone marrow <clears throat> biopsy and they have more than 60% of plasma cells, that is considered to be diagnostic of multiple myeloma. Same way, as I mentioned before, if someone has a light chain ratio of more than 100, that's an extremely high level of <clears throat> light chains in the blood, that's also considered to be a part of, uh, that's diagnostic of multiple myeloma. When we do an MRI to look for any bone lesions, if we see more than one bone lesion, which is measuring at least five millimeters, that's again considered a criteria for multiple myeloma. So the slim crap criteria is what we normally use to try to see if the patient has active myeloma.